2010, 11, like, yeah, 2010, 11 era. 2000, yeah, and that era was the fun era. So, 2010, yeah, 2011 era. Yeah. 2000, a long 10, time ago. 11, wow. Yeah. I came. Yeah. Just the only, oh, wow. That's the only thing. I was like, 10, came home 10, went back in 11. God damn. Oh, yeah, he was in jail. He a criminal. Oh, yeah. we got a, uh, I was in jail. 2010, 2010. <laughs> I was talking about the only reason yeah. they my co-host because they got to do community service through me. <laughs> <laughs> they doing their time. They <laughs> uh, right. Uh, I was in a program, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So, yeah, 2010, 2011, he got a, a viral man. 308 million selling. What you was selling? He was knocking on the door selling a uh, cleaning oh, product. Like organic cleaner, all purpose. Oh, man. Organic cleaner, all purpose. That's yeah, what it was talking. like an all purpose organic cleaner. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. How's that? So I was like just knocking on rich people's door, just selling like how we look for spots. We do like the five minute drill, look at pick out like five like like we pick out like five different things that's dirty, then knock on their door. So if they rims dirty or they window got hard water, you know what I'm saying? Then we yeah, knock on I think that's the video I saying. Yeah, so that's when the one they I came seen. to the door, so it was open. Y'all was Dr. Bronner before it was Dr. Bronner. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> right. for sure. And I'll be looking at Dr. Brown. It's crazy face. because the owner of the company was from um, Chicago. He used to always some. Well, he stayed in Harvey, Illinois. He used to say he stayed across street from R. Kelly. He used to always had these stories like he went to high school and he used to get chased home by some black stone rangers or something like wow. that. He went deep in. Yeah, he was yeah, so back. Yeah, crazy. Was crazy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, so like it, it's funny though, but that's who like gave me my first shot. Like. Well, that, not my first shot. Like, my first shot, I started off doing door-to-door -door when I was, like, 12 years old. Okay. But, like, I even got my kids going door-to-door. -door. I got, like, 10 kids, by the way. And they, like, you, you know, got like, Wait. Them. You I ain't going to pull like, you got yeah, how many right, you kids? Got kids? Yeah, I got, I got nine and one. Man, right? you a freak. <laughs> this man a freak. Man. Boy, you <laughs> ain't what? Boy, your yeah. ass. Boy, your yeah. ass don't know what a condominium yeah. is, do you? He didn't call STD at least twice. He never had a Look at him. At least twice. He burned it down. He got it. He got it. He burned it down. He burned it. Nah, you good because you just recently got married, right? Yeah, yeah. I just got married. That's what's up. Congratulations. That's a big dog move right yeah. there. That's a big dog move. I'm scared of that, but yeah, congrats to you too. Woo! Wife, yeah. Like she a blessing though, you feel me? That's, that's like good. I got three by her and like one on the way. So by know, her, she been holding it down before the fame, after the fame. Yeah. You feel me? So you know, like you always get the one. Like my my, my kid's one. mom, I, I got a lot of respect for him. But like her, she was the one that I separated her from them. You feel me? Because right. she was with me right. before it happened. After that, you know what I'm saying? Like I was yeah. messing with her before I even went viral, and she was with me 
through the ups and downs yeah. and still with oh, me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, she just drove all the way here pregnant. You feel me? And was like, like holding down the kids and everything. So, but she could always do that. You feel yeah, because so his license is fat. He be drinking. And drinking. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, you ain't got a way <laughs> No, I just got my license and everything. My job was suspended over here. <laughs> no, they were suspended though for sure. Right. No, yeah. Why you ain't drive? I told her I was gonna drive, but I was like doing business on the phone. And I just oh, okay. was crazy. I just got into an accident driving and texting before, like two like two days ago. Yeah, that shit right. is scary. So, right. so, oh, like, yeah. I ain't about so she like heck no. <laughs> she scared and nervous. <laughs> like she saw her car came back flipped. <laughs> like she was oh, like, yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, the itch, it, it, man, it, the car went out like a man, a Tahoe come back like a Porsche. Like what kind of trunk in the back, huh? It was a two hole. Like, it, it was a two hole. hole. <laughs> <laughs> like, it left for Tahoe, came yeah. back a two hole. Yeah. Yeah. Knocked the A off that bitch. Yeah, so. So, yeah, that's good. You got you always got to separate the queens from the baby mamas. You know, yeah. you still giving their respect and shit, yeah. but, you know, it's the wife. It yeah. is what it is. Yeah. So, that child support will be there in <laughs> three, four days. They ain't been there, though. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's on the way. All right. Heck so, yeah. in 2011, had went viral. Mm-hmm. Um, I see you had stopped. You had dropped for a second. What happened? Like, the, what happened on that journey? Well, yeah, see, I didn't even know I had went viral. You feel me? Like, like, um, was basically like I could just tell you how the it, the situation even happened. I like, <clears throat> all right. So I was telling you like when I was like twelve years old, I got into sale. Well, I got into like door to door. You feel me? Like at twelve years old, like in Detroit, we got like Detroit news. Like you know how y'all got like. The Herald, uh, I forgot y'all got like the Chicago Herald, trip, like, yeah. Tribune, yeah, Chicago, and the Tribune, yeah. So we got <clears throat> the Detroit News and Free Press. So like when I was like twelve years old, I grew like um, like five inches. I went from like five nine to like five foot four or five. You know what I'm saying? So I was like tall as a twelve year old. You said you went back. You said you went four. I went from four. I mean, I went from four nine, oh. like four foot oh, okay, nine, okay, okay. and I woke up like <laughs> five foot four, five foot five. You, know you woke saying? up like that. Yeah. So I grew like five or six inches overnight. You right, man, me? you couldn't fit no shoes. Yeah. So yeah, I like yeah. was hanging out the bed. So Damn. I go to school. You feel me? And I'm like, um, I, I tried out for basketball, but like when I grew up, we I was so poor I couldn't even pay attention. Like we was wearing like pro wings, XJ nine hundreds. It was yeah. like crazy. You feel me? Yeah. So it was to the point like I asked my mama for some Jordans, and like she down there threw the <laughs> phone at me. So right. you know what I'm saying? But like that's how I met because she used to work two jobs. So right then and there, I went to school and um I was trying out for the basketball team because you know like an African African American, you know like as black people. Like, the only thing we think that can make it out the hood is, like, playing basketball or rapping. Rap. You know yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, it's crazy how, like, we brainwash, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, to make a long story short, I went and tried out for the basketball team. I forgot. I know I had some shoes on that I was humiliated. As soon as I went to try out, I couldn't even showcase my skills because I slid. Like, I like I had on some slip and slide, some trick daddies. I, had some, like, <laughs> yeah, I was I'm, sliding the whole practice. I slid feet. out of the gym to the lunchroom. It was crazy. They just was roasting me. Right. So... Like, I, I came home crying, and on the way home from school, I seen, like, a telephone pole. Like, they used to staple jobs. Like, you know, I don't know if they do that here, but yeah, they staple yeah, jobs. Yeah, like, they if you want to make, like, $50 a week, you can um, get this door-to-door, like, paper route job. You know, like, we one person carry the wagon, another one throw the paper at the mm-hmm. news, yeah. the addresses. So I called the number, boom. And then they hired me the same day. So I had a job working from, like, 4 to 6. Like, it, it was an after-school program. Mm-hmm. So my first day out, you feel me? I'm with another black kid, of course. We like from Detroit, so we didn't work Detroit. We went to like the suburbs, you know what I'm saying? Because we yeah. knew if we would have worked out there, they'd try to rob. You know, same thing here. You feel me? Uh, anyway, make a long story short. So we throwing the papers to the addresses, and we ran into this white, angry dude. I guess that he, because when we went to his house, we seen like a whole bunch of papers stacked up at his like address, and we we weren't thinking. We like, well, shit, it's on here. We so we threw it, and he came out like. I'm tired of you. Keep on um, throwing papers at my yard. He was like, I'm about to call the fucking police. He was tripping. He was like cussing us out. Now, me and my coworker, we both black. And we see this white dude. The first thing we going to think of, like, you racist. racist. You feel me? Yeah. So my, my coworker got mad. Like, man, I'm about to go fight. I'm like, no, nah, don't do it. Let me watch this. This is how you do it. So I, like, this is just, like, how I got, like, so, like, a people person. Because I used to listen to, like, Eminem, Jay-Z. Like, a lot of metaphor rappers. You feel me? Yeah, That's so how I was able to, like, put words together as a salesperson. And I like learned this at 12 years old so like i just said no I, I got this i said sir can i ask you one question he was like what i was like you got kids right he was like yeah i was like if two of your kids was playing 
and one broke the glass. You want to spank both of them, right? He was like, no. I was like, well, you shouldn't spank us for the bad performance. Let me just call my stupid advisor. And when I said stupid advisor, he started busting out laughing. And I, and I we just upgraded him like Beyonce. So he went from like not <laughs> wanting the newspaper subscription to like end up getting a whole year. You feel me? We like made, made him buy like a whole year subscription. So I went from a paper boy to a salesperson. You feel me? So my goal was to make like $50, you know what I'm saying, to get some shoes. But once they found out I was a salesperson, they had me like going door to door, like selling newspaper subscription. You feel me? Because yeah. you was making like twenty, you could make like twenty dollars like each door. You know what I'm saying? That you sell. Oh, okay. So I was like, forget okay. making fifty dollars a week. You know what I'm right. saying? So I went from making like fifty dollars a week as a paperboy to making like three to five hundred dollars a week at twelve years old. You feel me? Yeah. So I fell in love with it because I'm like, dang, I ain't never had, like I'm buying Jordan. I'm buying. You know what I'm saying? I'm buying. What, what year? I was, was like, was like twelve years old. I was like, that was like um, <laughs> nine. That was like. Like 95, 96. It was around like. Damn, you know, like so you had the flu game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Original. Yeah. 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 Oh, gee. Damn. Yeah. 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 That's when Jordan, y'all, when they played against Gary Payton in the yeah, finals. Sure. Yeah, yeah. 160. Yeah, that's what y'all did. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 160. So, like, they yeah. upgraded me, boom. So then I, like, I started, like, just going door to door. So, like, at that age, I just fell in love with just, like, making people laugh and, like, working on my confidence. So at the age of, like, 12 to, like, 14, I did it all the way till I was, like, 14. Then, like, 14 and a half, 15, that's when I had, like, grew, like, six feet. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm about to take basketball serious. I'm like, to go somewhere. So I played basketball on up to my grandmother died. My grandmother died when I was, like, nine, like 18. That's when I dropped out my senior year, and I just was, like, damn near homeless. Because I was staying with my mom and shit. I was 18 now, you feel me? So yeah. I'm, like, staying house to house, staying with my uncle, my uncle, because my mom wasn't playing that. So then I remember, like, before my grandmother died, she just straight told me, like, on her deathbed, like, you going to be, like, the person that changed the whole family. Like, like, the, like you going to, like, she was That's like, good. you the black sheep of the family. But not only that, you is a, like, she's like, you funny. Like, I knew I was, like, funny because, like, she had a funeral and I had put on a comedy show. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. They like I like I just that's was like more, that's, that's, that's yeah I had my show. family cr like, like crying that. laughing when everybody was sad but she told me on her deathbed like I was gonna be a famous popular like she didn't even say nothing about sales she just said that I was like a hustler and I'll be making people day I'm a people person and I'm gonna be like somebody and like when I went out of town at like 19 that's when I did the traveling sales selling the organic cleaner you feel me and I went out there with like my mentality like. Like, I remember she told me, like, it ain't your fault if you was born poor, but if you over the age of 18 and you die poor, that's your fault because you had something to do with it. You feel me? She told mm -hmm. me this at, like, 19 years old. Then when I went out of town, I heard, like, my mentor that was from Chicago say the same thing. You feel me? So I was like, great mind snake. Like, so now I was working every day to just make her proud. You know what I'm saying? So I started buying books, investing. Just I just started. They said, if you want to have something from a dummy, put it in a book. So I just started reading books, started writing down jokes and stuff, and I started taking them to the door. So I felt like that. The day I went viral, like people don't understand. They see that video, it's like, dang, this guy was hilarious. He's funny. All that. And a lot of people ask me all the time. That's why I was like, man, once I just tell everybody what happened, they'd be like, it'd be mind blowing because mm -hmm. a lot of people, when they saw that video, they thought it was set up. Like, oh, you were so funny that you knocked on their door and you were so funny. They stopped it and they said, man, let's record you. No, actually, that's exactly how it happened. That was like, as soon as I knocked on the door, they record. You know what I'm saying? But they don't know that I had got kidnapped by Indians mm -hmm. to like selling Jamie Foxx. Kidnapped by Indians? Yeah. Well, not like... What? 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 Yeah. Yeah. You uh, got... Like, I got kidnapped by some Native Americans. What, you know, doing like, sales? Yeah. So, look, this is... I'm, I'm about to tell you exactly how that went. So, basically, um, <laughs> what? I was, like, the top salesperson. I, I came in the game, like, in 2004. That's when I came into the sales game. Okay. And I was, like, 19, right? So, boom. Damn. 2004. Yeah. 14. Yeah. I was, like, 19. Boom. I remember, like, yesterday. So, 2004. I was writing jokes and stuff, right? So I was beating all the salespeople just because I was funny. Like I was, you see, like on a video, I make you laugh. Once no, you love me, you just gonna buy. Way. It was people that was like, I don't even care what you sell. I'm just gonna buy because they just thought I was a comedian. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So anyway, but that was my goal. My goal was to like get people to love me because they said if you could knock on somebody's door that you never met before and make them laugh with your sense of humor, you won't be afraid to perform in front of an audience. So that experience taught me how to deal with like objection. Not only that, it taught me how to deal with getting booed. Remember we were talking about earlier, like mm -hmm. getting booed on stage? That's why I was so able to come back because I'm like so used to people knocking on their door and I'm a stranger and they turn me down. So it's easy to get in front of a stage, you know what yeah. I'm saying? People I don't know, I'm like used to it. I've been doing this shit all my life. Excuse my French. But anyway, so make a long story short. So I was like the top salesperson from like 2004 to like 2009, right? 2009, 2010. Bam. So 
November, right? I remember like yesterday. November, this dude beat me, right? He was like, a, he was like, I thought he was Spanish. His name, shout out to Chris. His name, Chris Amon. He had beat me in this date in sales, right? right. So he worked the Indian reservation, right? So anyway, he came in with like 40 some sales and I had like 20 some, I had like a slow day. So he came in talking crazy to me like, yeah, we just beat the goat. Yeah, we, cause he never say anything to me. Like I always be humble. You don't know if I got like a good or a bad day. Cause I, I'm like humble and I like try to teach other people how to sell like me. But he was the type of one, once he beat me, he act like he was better than me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, I've been beating you for five years. You know what I'm saying? I've been the best sale. I want rookie of the year, salesman of the year, salesman of the month. I, I've been beating everybody just because I, they, they, Braised my sales quota higher than all of the experienced people when I was new, you know what I'm saying? Because they were trying to figure out how I was beating people. And I was just telling them, like, strictly personality. Like, I'm a comedian first, and I'm a salesman second. So people, they buying my show. They don't care about the product. Yeah. So anyway, this one day he beat me. So and, uh, how we got paid, we got paid three to ways, bets, so bonuses, and commission, yeah. right? We got paid off a of commission from selling the product, and we got paid off of bonuses. Like, they give you, like... Bonuses like when you uh, make a lot of sales, sure. and then yeah. they get pay you off of bets. Like he could bet other salespeople. Mm. So I yeah. consistently oh, got in the oh. meeting, and I raised my hand. I said, "Look, I got a bet." They was like, "What?" I said, "I bet Chris and Miles that I'm gonna go work the same neighborhood he worked, and I'm gonna double his sales, right?" So my manager dropped me off in an Indian reservation, right? Because that's where he worked at. But I didn't know the dude was Indian. So it basically was like, that's like me going to the hood. I'm selling my people. You feel me? Yeah. Like I can sell my cousin, Ray Ray. I can sell right, Ruby, right, I can right, sell right. Beer. I, I'm selling my right. people. So he was basically like selling his people. You feel me? So anyway, to make a long story short, I go knock on the first dude door. As soon as I get up to go knock on the door, the dude was out washing his car. I was like, so he had a gate. I walked in the gate. And like, I usually whistle and stuff because they got dogs and stuff like that. So yeah. I was like, you, hello. This dude came around his truck. He was like, he was like, get the F off my property before I blow your head off. I said, get the F off. Like, we, I don't know if you can cuss, but he was yeah, like, cool. you know what I mean? He was like, get the, I was like, I was like, um, he was like, oh, you think I'm playing? Because I was trying to be persistent because I'm like, I deal with arrogant people all the time. You know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, you think I'm playing? Hold on. So he went in his house. I was like, oh, yeah, he ain't playing. He come back out with a gun. <laughs> So I was like, you know what? You ain't got to tell me twice. So I walked out of the gate. He followed me with the gun. So I called my manager. I'm like, hey, look, you got to come get me, bro. They over here tripping. He was like, what? He started laughing. He was like, boy, you were selling all the little tickets in a meeting. He was like, bro, you better go out there and go to work. You ain't never called me about nobody tripping. He was like, what's going on? I was like, no, this dude following me with a gun right now. He was like, well, look, I just dropped off your coworker. He was like, I'm like 15, 20 minutes away from him. I can't get to you right now. He was like, if he keep following you with a gun, <laughs> when you get off the phone with me, just call the police. So I hung up, boom. And I turned around, he was going back to his house. So I started walking towards the school because I seen like a school across the street and there was kids. I'm like, let me walk towards the school in case he come back out. He ain't about to pop me in front of no kids. Smart. You know what I'm saying? Smart. So as I'm walking right. towards the school, this lady just happened to open up to her door. She seen me and hurry up and ran back in and closed the door. So I'm thinking of like what DMX said, nosy people get it too. So I'm like, I'm about to run over to this lady house. So I go knock on her door. Boom, she had one of those screens like on Friday. You know how they got the dark screen yeah. where they can see in outside, but you can't, but she see. can't see inside. Yeah. So I bang on her door, boom, boom. So she come out with like a little stick, but I couldn't see her because like I said, it was dark. You know what I'm saying? I just see her stick hanging out. And I was like, don't shoot, just a chocolate kid. She was like, is you dark chocolate or light chocolate? I'm like, what the hell, this is a chocolate contest? I was like, I'm dark chocolate. She was like, you dark chocolate like African American? I'm like, yeah. She was like, oh my God, come to find out the lady was blind. That's why she had her stick. I just seen her stick. But when she was asking me these questions, I'm like, something gotta be wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She was like, uh, she was like, what are you doing in this neighborhood? She was like, I'm surprised one of my nephews ain't um harass you. She was like, you do not supposed to be in this area. She was like, you know what you're doing? Right and I'm like, can't even see. Yeah, because I told her I was wow. African American. You know what I'm saying? She was like, you, you dark chocolate kid. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the minute but when she up. said that you African American, I was like, yeah, so that's when she hit me with that. She was like, what are you out here doing? I was like, I thought you never asked. I was like, you see the spot right here? She was like, wait, I don't got time for no sales talk. She was like, come on in. She so she let me come in her house. So she got her little stick, like trying to find her spot to walk. And then so I'm like, what the hell? So then she was like, she started telling me she was blind and she was telling me that her brother just got killed. She was like, her brother is um African American and, and Indian. Right. And she said he had got killed. No, she said her brother was Indian. And right. she said he got killed by an African American. And she uh, said that I'm surprised you in this neighborhood because it's a war with the Indians and the African American. And I'm thinking, like, what the hell? I was like, that's probably why this dude just pulled a gun out on me. You feel me? Right. Sure. And come to find out, that was one of her nephews. She was like, do me a favor. And I was like, what? She was like, how many bottles you got in your bag? I was like, I got four bottles. She was like, I will bottle four bottles right now on one occasion. I was like, what? She was like, if you could um, call your boss and tell him to come pick you up, because I'm not going to let you leave out my house until you pick you up, because this is a bad time to be in this neighborhood. She was like, it's a war going on, like, with the black.
blacks and the Indians. So she bought my four bottles. So I called my boss back. I was like, look, where you at? It's been like 15, 20 minutes. I don't got no more product. I was like, look, I'm not quitting. Just take me to another area because I explained the situation. He was like, well, you know you're going to forfeit that bet, right? Because you better Chris that you was going to. Um, double his sales in his neighborhood. I said, man, you can take me to another Indian reservation. As long as I work in India, I'm not about to work over here. You want me to be dead or something? You know what I'm saying? So he was like, all right, I'm outside. So I leave out her house. I see him, right? So he like, with his uh, Game Boy. That's how far he was from me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I see him when I come outside. So I'm going to leave out her gate to go to him. Bro, tell me as soon as I walk out the gate, like five four-wheelers, you know them like, them, um, eight, them, you know, ATV. Yeah. yeah. Like five of them just cut me off. They just, like zoom right in front of me and cut me off, right? So the dude jumped off the first four wheeler. He was like, as soon as he jumped off, he had a gun. He had like a last of the Mohegan sword. Like it just what? fell off his little four wheeler. I'm like, what the hell? And then he was like, he was like, oh, you thought I was playing? You think it's a game? You think it's a game? He was like, my brother about to pull up in a brown native fry truck. If you don't get in, I'm gonna blow your head off. Like he had the gun like pointing at me and everything. I swear to God, like he was like this close though. You feel me? Yeah. So as I'm looking at him like in front of me, I see the van like right where that bro the van turned around and left like. Just left me there. So now I'm like nervous and scared. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. So next thing I know. Wait, your boss left you? Yeah, he just pulled up. So he saw them pull jump off. Oh, my God. He was was like, yeah. So I would have quit. Bro, no, look, let me tell you. So he just pulled off. You feel me? So right when he pulled off, I just started crying instantly because I like the, the, I see the truck pull up now. So the truck pull up. The dude opened the door. He's like, "Get in, motherfucker!" And he had the gun like aiming at me. So I was walking towards the van like I was just like this close getting to you. And next thing I know, like an unmarked police car just happened to come out of nowhere and like rescue me. Now I almost shit in my pants. I'm like crying and everything. And the police like, "What's crazy? This is how I knew they know that area, right?" Because when the police, it was only one police car. He just drove straight to me. And when he drove the truck, bagged up real fast and like er, just turned and went that way. They start going through houses and ditches because this their neighborhood, so they right. knew where to go. So the cop just hurry up. The rest of me, he was on this little um, walk talk like, "I need backup." Like he got me in the car. I'm like crying. I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like he was like, "What happened?" I'm like, "I don't really know." I was like, "I just know they was probably about to try to kill me or kidnap me or something." He just told me to get in the truck. I was about to get in. So I was just talking fast, breathing hard, crying and everything. And I was like, "Did the lady call you and tell you that something was happening with her?" Uh, with, he was like, no, we just happened to work this area because it's been a lot of like uh, attempted murders, kidnapping, and violence over here for the last couple of days. So I've been monitoring this area. So he, he like, this happened like at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, right? <laughs> Bro, they didn't oh, find man. these dudes until like 7 o'clock at night. So they took me down to the station. So like, they had me in a witness protection. I had to go behind this black screen and I had to point the dudes off. I felt like 6'9", before 6'9". It was crazy. I was like nervous. I didn't want to point these dudes eight. off. But I was like, man, so I was like, yeah, it was them two. It was like five, six dudes. I only remember the two dudes. I remember the dude that told me to get in the truck and the dude that pulled the gun out on me. And then was the two brothers of the lady that bought from me. Then was her nephews for real. Damn. I remember like yesterday, they were like the Delgado brothers or something. It was crazy. So anyway, so they let me go like at 7, 8 o'clock at night. So... I, like the van come pick me up, bro. I snapped on them. I said, I can't believe y'all just left me out here to get killed for a bottle of cleaner. I've been y'all top sales person for five years. You just gonna turn and leave me out here? To, like I was like, bro, y'all like I'm about to put y'all on blast. I was snapping, bro. I was like mad. So I was like, yo, I quit. Y'all gotta give me a flight back to Detroit. So I was in California at this time. Right. So they flew me home. Like I said, this happened in November. Remember, like yesterday. So this like November. 2009 or 10. It was one of them years. I, it was 2000. All I got to do is go look at the video. Whatever year that was, the video got uploaded. It was a year before that. You know what I'm saying? Because the video went viral in like February. So anyway, it was like November 2009 or 10. Remember that? So bam, fast forward to like at, 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 to my Thanksgiving that happened, Christmas, New Year's. So now it's, all, it's like a week before Valentine's Day. This dude bang on my door in Detroit. Boom, 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 boom. He served my mama some papers. I'm looking like, is child support or something? It was a subpoena. You know what a subpoena is, right? Well, like, you got to go yeah, yeah, back sure. and testify. Yeah, yeah. So they served me a subpoena where I had to go back to California to testify against these, like, Native Americans, dude. You feel me? Because they, they had, like, a whole bunch of, like, charges. They had, like, attempted kidnapping, kidnapping, hate crime. It was all type of stuff that they had. You know what I'm saying? So I had to go testify. So I knew it was real, right? Because when they picked me up from the airport, they had a sign that said, Kenny Brooks, a dude with a suit. I'm like, what the hell? And the dude escorted me in like a black Tahoe that was tinted. I thought they was picking up Obama and his kids or something. It was not, crazy. not the one that tipped over, right? <clears throat> not that one. What? Not the one that no, took no, over. No, it was like yeah, like an SUV. <laughs> so, so bam, so he he picked he picked me up, boom, put me in a car, and they drive me to like all the way like in the desert, like by Palm Springs, like like it was crazy. It was like two hours away from LA. So they 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 picked me up like Saturday night. 
So I went to sleep. Like Sunday morning, they bang on my hotel room and they bang on like five. And I'm like, you got to get up. We got to get ready. We got a two hour drive. So we leave like at 545. We get to L.A. at like 715, 720. Boom. So I had to go to court. So we ate breakfast real quick. So we got to the courtyard like 745. So we go through the metal detector. So I go upstairs. I'm like, let me use the restroom real quick. So I walk in the restroom. So Bear in mind, they had like two dudes monitoring me. They had like two dudes with a suit. One dude standing on this side of the bathroom door and another dude standing on this side. So I walk in the bathroom door. When I walk in there, this big Indian dude, he was like, hey, you motherfucker. And he went like this. And I just turned around and took off run. I ran out of the bathroom and I ran. Like, as soon as I ran out of the bathroom, the two dudes, I was like, hey, this dude just tried to um, slit my throat. I just, like, and I took off and ran the opposite way. So I ran towards the exit doors because I could have got on the elevator. But when, when he did, I didn't even think of the elevator. I just thought of just getting away so I ran down the steps like the exit step and I ran out of the like the courtroom and I ran I just was running I seen like a gas station I ran behind a big gas station I just started kicking the door I was kicking the back door and the dude came out like with uh like the trash I was like I need your help somebody trying to kill me I was like um can you, can you call the police so he called the police so like five minutes go by I was still scared Excuse me. I was like, can I use your phone? So I called my mom. I was like, look, you got to get me back to Detroit. I knew this was a setup. This dude, I'm on my way to court. I'm explaining her to what happened, like talking fast and everything. I'm like, I'm going to the restroom. This dude, somebody's going to slit my throat. I just took off. She's like, where you? I was like, I don't know. I'm in the back of this gas station. I was like, can you uh, try to get me a plane ticket back home? She was like, boy, you know I ain't got no money. She was like, you better uh go back to them people. And so I'm like, I'm not going back. This is a setup. I don't even know where I'm at. She was like, well, you in California, right? I'm like, yeah. She was like, you better call that sales company. You've been a top salesperson for five years. I'm pretty sure they'll get you back home. You explain what happened. So I called my manager, dude, the ones that I had cussed out. You feel me? And I haven't right. talked to them in like three months, two, three months. Because last time I talked to them is when they flew me to Detroit, like in November. You feel me? This is like February now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm like, uh, dang, I got it. Do a, uh, a 10, 11 year anniversary after this too. I gotta post this video again. Cause this, this, this uh, speaking of February, it happened around this time. Like, ain't that crazy? So yeah, this was like February, right? So boom. So, <clears throat> so I called my manager and I was like, um, I need you to do me a favor. I was like, I'm stranded in um, California right now. I was like, I've been y'all top salesperson for five years. I was like, I need y'all to give me a ticket back to Detroit. So I was like, cause I, this dude, the, these Indian people that I was dealing with, with y'all, they, his, I guess one of the uncles or somebody just tried to kidnap, I mean, tried to threaten me, so my dad was gonna slit my throat, and I ran off. So the manager was like, what, what? Oh, he was like, he was like, hold on, he was like, so we, we you at? I was like, I forgot where I was at. I just told him the location. He was like, all right, let me call the big boss, and I'm gonna call you right back. So he called me back in like two minutes, and he was like, um, so we could do one or two things. He was like, the big boss said that we can get you a Greyhound ticket. It's like 270 bucks. We'll just pay for that. Only thing is that your Greyhound bus don't leave until like eight o'clock at night. It was like eight in the morning. You feel me? The court was like, he was like, or we could come get you and we could drop you off in a good neighborhood where you ain't working on Indian reservation and you could just go to work and we could use the rest of your commission that you make today and pay for you a flight because your flight is like $600 from California to Detroit. He was like, and the big boss said he, he, he would pay half of the ticket or he could get you a Greyhound. I was like, what? So I was like, damn, they're stranded. So I had to make a split decision uh, quickly. I was like, well, I'm not about just to go back with the people that you came with. Because I was scared. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah, just like, like, I'm telling you, like, it was a setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I did like, too at, when he said, like, like, at the time, they drove two I, hours I, yeah. away from the airport. At, at, and then at the time, I didn't back. know what the, right. I, I'm yeah, thinking, like, I didn't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, I'm still I'm still devastated off the kidnapping shit from what happened on territory. You feel me? And then, like, somebody just automatically said they're going to slit my throat, and I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Okay, when they when they did the slit your throat, what them two security guards do? I don't know. I just said that this dude trying to kill me and I took off. I never looked back. I just ran for my life. You feel me? Like, I'm from Detroit. I was just using common yeah. sense. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I took off. I ain't look back and see what they did. I know I ran out of there. They didn't even know where I was at. So anyway, to make a long story short, Correct. so I was thinking like, either I'm going to get this flight right now or I'm going to get a Greyhound. I was like, I don't even want to take a chance on getting a Greyhound and wait 10, 12 hours for the bus to come and they know where I'm at again, you feel me? I was like, I'm just gonna chance it. I was like, all right. So he, I, I, I had them come pick me up, boom. And they dropped me off in Tarzana, California. Now Tarzana is like Studio City. It's like by Calabasas with like all the rich, like okay. famous people at, right? Yeah, that's what DDG yeah, Moore Yeah, 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 so okay. boom. 
So they dropped me off um, in Tarzana. Like, and so the first couple doors I'm just knocking, but I'm getting my head beat in like mentally. Like they not buying, they like re arrogant, rich as hell. And I, I wasn't in sales mode. I wasn't the happy, funny sales Right, because you just left for right. just, just left a different time. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. before I quit, I just stood on the corner and I just said like a quick prayer. I was just crying like, please, Lord, just give me the strength, have peace of mind. I forgot what I said. I just said something powerful. The next door I knocked on, no exaggeration, this old white cool dude come to the door. He's like, how can I help you, young man? What you already selling? I was like, man, I got the best thing. To, it, it, like off his energy, I just pumped back up. Yeah, like, he gave you mode. the energy. So yeah. I just was like back, like how the person you saw in that video, I was back at it, you know what I'm saying? So he was like, he was like, um, I got some hard water on my shower. Cause I forgot I said like some joke about hard water. He started laughing. He's like, I tell you what, I got some hard water on my shower. We're clean, I'm gonna buy right now. So as he, as I'm walking in his house, I see he got pictures of like Magic Johnson. James Worthy, okay. Kobe, Shaq. Yeah. He got pictures of old Lakers Ooh. and new Lakers. Like, I was like, you must be a doctor. He was like, how did you know? I was like, you got a lot of patience. He started laughing. He was like, man, he was like, you ever thought about doing stand-up comedy? And I was like, yeah. He was like, you know Jamie Foxx there across the street, right? I'm like, what? He was like, yeah. So I, right then I was like, ding, ding, ding. I was like, this is my big break. That's how I'm thinking, right? Yeah. So he was like, he was like, you know what? He was like, actually, I am a doctor. He was like, I'm a doctor for the Lakers. He was like, you know, every time the Lakers get injured, like they take yeah, their MRI. They their eyes off. Yeah, he the one that like fix them up. So he's been a Laker for like over 30 years. You feel me? That's why he had all these pictures with the Lakers. So he ended up buying a bottle. And then as soon as I left, I was like, so I, I was like, this is my big break. So I just took off, ran straight to Jamie Foxx house. I left his house so quick. I left my product. He had to call me back. Like, hey, son, you like, I was like, oh, my bad. So I ended up getting my product. I ran over there. But Jamie Foxx had like a gate. You feel me? Like he had a gate like right here and his house was like, two miles all the way in the back. Right. So I couldn't see his house, I just seen the gate. So I started pressing the buzzer and stuff. So it started ringing like a telephone, like it just kept ringing. Then the answer machine came on. So I go to the next house. The next house is the house that y'all seen where I was like, I'm be quick like this, the, the, yeah. the viral the video. Home, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm in front of that house, about to go to that house. And then I seen, some just told me to turn around, like right next door to that house that I went viral was Jamie Foxx house. Uh, right across the street, if you see the video, I can show y'all later on. But you gonna see a white house. That so white was that house, the wrong house? That, no, the white house was the doctor, the Lakers doctor. Yeah, well, I ran from. across the street to Jamie Foxx house, but right next door was the so, viral lady. That yeah. was the neighborhood. So, like, as I'm going to the the lady house, I see a brown Maybach pulling the gate. So I ran back next door. You feel me? By the time I get over here, the the car was already in the yard. You feel me? And he had one of those sensor gates, like it was closing. But once my body got up close, the gate started opening back up. You feel me? Yeah. So I'm walking in, I'm like, hell yeah, this is my moment. I'm like, damn, I'm about to steal Jamie Foxx. I'm like, geeked up now. Oh, like, you just stuck so, in that man's yeah. house. So look, straight look, up. He's worse than the drink. Yeah. So Go look, look, there, so look, I'm, walking, I'm walking in this house, right? And this camera started moving, like watching me. So we get on the intercom. He was like, wait, no trespassing, no shot. How can I help you? I was like, COD. He was like, all right, one second. So he pull in the garage and he come back like on a golf cart. Like, and I see him, he like driving up and I'm like, dang, this really Jamie Foxx. So he must've seen like my cleaner spray bottle hanging out my pants. He was like, wait, wait, you trying to sell me something? No, I said, no trespassing. I thought you said COD. I was like, yeah, come on down. He started busting out laughing. So he get like this close, like I'm looking dead up. And he saw me, he was like, oh, not only is you funny, you funny looking. And he's like, boy, you got, he was like, you got a grill on you. He just started, he just started, no, I swear to God, he just started roasting my teeth, right? So like, it was funny, cause like he started cooking me and I was like, I'm about to cook this nigga. So I just started roasting the back. I was like, man, you rich as hell with the little ass areas. Your areas look like sugar. And he started cutting out laughing. So when I said that one joke, he said, you know what, I like you. That's it, that's it, he'll get in. So he had me get on this passenger side and then he just gave me like a war a tour of his house he, he just started telling me his whole life story like man i'm from Terrell, texas he was like i was just like you when i was young he's like i was a hustler he was like i used to be a shoe salesman he was like i got adopted then he, he introduced did. he introduced That's me true. to he introduced me to a stepdad and shit then he was like what's crazy is that he wasn't even supposed to be at home bro this was god because he was like bro, you know that movie the django yeah. yeah this is how long this was when i went viral he was shooting the django and he only came home because he left his script for his movie so that that's how the timing was. So he was only coming home to, to get, get his get script and go back to work, you feel yeah, me? And then he just started right, telling yeah, me his story, yeah. like how he like he was like, look, he was like, let me tell you something. He was like, bro, you knocked on my door for a reason. He was like, you got a purpose. And I just started crying. He was like, what happened? I was like, bro, I wasn't even supposed to meet you. I was just quit my sales job. I got kidnapped by Indians early. And he was like, what? What you was doing at 7-Eleven? And then I just started <laughs> cracking out loud. And then he was like, he was like, no, he was like, look, let me tell you something. He was like, let me tell you how uh God works. He was like, look. He was like, you know how many times I quit as a salesman? 
He was like, I used to quit three times a day. He was like, one time, he was like, I used to do sales all day and I do stand up comedy at night. He was like, it got so bad that like stand up ain't like how it used to be back in the day when I was going um, doing stand up. He said he used to go to a lot of open mics and they used to have you sign your name on a paper. Mm -hmm. And he said that they used to always pick the females first. And he said one day he put Jamie Foxx on a paper because he thought it was a female and they picked him. And it was him and he came to out acting as Jamie, like Wanda, remember with the lips and like, yeah. Yeah. and he said that's how he got his break. And he said that the next day he knocked on somebody's door and the dude was like, yeah, I saw your stand up comedy. He was like, look, he was like, the dude ain't even buy the shoes from him because he was a shoe salesman. Yeah. And he said that the dude turned around and said, look, I'm doing this audition for Living Color tomorrow. And he came and that's how he made his big break. Mm -hmm. He said the same dude that didn't even yeah. buy from him, like when he was selling shoes, gave him an audition and that's how he became famous. Like remember in Living Color? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. yeah. So that's how he blew up. And then after that, the next house, bro, I'm talking about after I sold them and took a picture and stuff and we chopped it up, the next house I go to, they recorded me. So it was crazy, right? I fast forward. This happened like 2011. So I'm going viral. I'm talking about I'm making sales. Like, I'm killing. Like, I'm just making all these sales, but I'm not knowing about viral. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't had no iPhone. Like, it, internet wasn't how it was right now. You feel me? Like right, I said, sure. I found out because Ridiculousness reached out to me in 2017. It Damn. was like they paid this lady 20000 to use the copyrights to put on a show for the video, and they was gonna pay me $150 to go on Ridiculous and say, oh, I'm Kenny Brooks, this is my video, this will happen. I'm like, well, how you gonna pay me $150 to pay her all this money? And I'm the one on the video, you see what I'm saying? So that's when I, I like moved to LA and I monetized my channel, and I just started monetizing, I started my Instagram, YouTube, I just started all over, you feel me? Just like six, seven years later, boom. So I've been grinding from like 2017 till now, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But like my brand is Funny Silver, so I get booked for like funny shit or like sales, because I, I did 11 sure. years of door to door, so I got like knowledge on sales, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I moved to LA, so I started going to like content houses and like like different like uh, houses meeting like different influencers and stuff. So one day, I'm with uh, my boy Diamond B Films, and like I had met King Batch and a couple of other influencers and stuff, and Reggie Cubs, remember we was talking about him? Yeah. He was there, uh, like Tony Kiss, and like I was explaining it to them, because they were like, bro, we saw you back in our Vine days, you blew up before we did, and they was like, how did you go viral? So I'm telling them how I sold Jamie Foxx, and then one of them was like, bro, you know that's Jamie Foxx's nephew right there, right? So this dude FaceTimed Jamie Foxx, now this is 2017. Jamie Foxx get on the phone, right? He like, remember that dude you said that sold you some cleaner that blew up off the uh, viral video? He right here. And then Jamie Foxx, he got on the phone. He, so he showed me him. He was like, oh, you still ugly? He was like, boy, but you look like he started. So we started roasting again. And then I was like, man, I just want to thank you because ever since I left your door, man, that one door that I knocked on changed my life. I was like, I just want to thank you for calling your neighbors and telling them to record me. He was like, bro, let me tell you how racist my neighbor is. He was like, I did not call them and tell them to record nothing. He was like, after you left my door, why, tell me why my neighbors called me and said, hey, Jamie, I just want to give you a heads up. This this black suspicious kid looking like he case in the neighborhood was trying to break in your house. He was like, no, he not. This aspiring comedian, this name Kenny Brooks, you should open the door because he might sell you something. And that's how they came to the door with the camcorder. You know what I'm saying? You saw as soon as I opened the, opened the door, it was like, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, you saw even if know. in the video they zoomed in on my badge because they was thinking that I broke in houses. So yeah. in case the police came, they had my identification. Yeah. Like, yeah, he, yeah, this is him. You know what I'm saying? So then that's when the lady, like when she, when I found out she, like when she found out I went super viral and my video had like over 300 million views, she ended up taking the video down after she had already monetized and made like over 800K off that video. Dang. So that's Dang. how that went. You, you ain't know? make shit? I ain't make shit. Yeah, you I, 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 I went back to her house and when I was talking on the intercom like, yeah, you need to break bread like the last supper because I'm going to get my lawyer and everything. Like she ain't give me a dollar, bro. And then she ended up moving like. Because of you? Yeah. Damn, uh, eight hundred thousand. Damn, what's her address? <laughs> eight hundred yeah. thousand. I don't even remember it no more. But yeah, that was like 10, 11 years ago. Yeah, yeah for sure. Damn, crazy. Hey, it's crazy because like I said, it's like I'm like damn because I I remember it's like ten videos off the top of my head that I can remember from when I was growing because like 2011, I started like 2012, 2013. So it, I'm like, damn, I saw the video. It instantly made me feel like a kid again. I'm like, this nigga still doing this. <laughs> still yeah. got the stud cap on, halfway yeah. on like T.I., yeah. you yeah. still doing it. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, we got to get him on the show. That man, I, I, that was, For you sure. know, that, that, that's a, that's a. You got an yeah. interesting life. Man, yeah. man. Yeah. then you said, yeah. uh, we was upstairs chopping it up. You said that ridiculous, ridiculous. Ridiculousness. Ridiculousness, Ridiculousness reached out to you. That's Rob Deirdre, right? Yeah. Reached out to you 
and told you about that, and they the one that told you about motherfucking Ellen and all yeah, that. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. My the mother of my kid, my wife now, she was working like for the company. You feel me? She worked in the office. You know what I'm saying? And like she like basically was answering all the phones, getting all the emails and stuff. That's she the one told me like you know ridiculousness was trying to uh, put you on a show. That's how I end up. You know what I'm saying? Because the the whole time when I went viral. Like I was telling you, when people have viral moments, they usually capture that moment. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm fan I'm, I'm went viral for this. Me at the time, I didn't have that opportunity because they was sending all of the emails and trying to capture me through the company. Because remember, if you notice on the video, I was like, look, I'm, Kenny Brooks, remember this, Kenny Brooks. And they saw that the company was international sales, where our products, and they called the company looking for me. But the company didn't want to tell me because the company felt like if they told me and I went to find my fame, I wouldn't be working for the company no more. Because I was making the company a lot of exactly. money. You feel right. I was you, making you, top you, sales right. person. So they like, if we ball, leave this huh? dude. So when she was working in office, she was like, look, Ellen reached out to you. She got, I can show you on my Instagram, bro. Like, I got it in my archives. Like, Mike Epps reached out, Lil Boosie, like, Tyler Perry. Like, so those, Ellen, are, those are uh, missed opportunities? Yeah, because I, I, I didn't reach out to them. This, they reached out from, like, 2011 to, like, 2013. Yeah. I didn't find this out to 2017. 17, so this you know what I'm So this is, like, four, five years yeah, later. Yeah, for sure. So I'm sending them emails. They probably got new emails now. You know what I'm saying? It's like a spam now. You feel me? Right. So it was like missed opportunity. It was to the point, bro, that people didn't know. They thought I died. Like, if you go look up right now, they got on YouTube, they got Kenny Brooks got killed by his brother. They got even a song. It's so hard to say goodbye. For like, real? somebody killed me. I swear to God. Because they so thought I was weak, dead. Right? They, didn't, they didn't, like, you know I what I'm saying? So I, like, started all this. So it's like, bro, I'm telling you, like, People that like Waka Flocka just reached out to me like, bro, I saw your video. Like people didn't even know I still was relevant. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's why I started coming back around doing videos again. You know what I'm saying? So people be like, oh, y'all remember this video? So like, you know what I mean? But that's how that happened. But like right now as we speak, I'm writing a TV show right now called like Door to Door Chronicles because I got like, I got like different episodes that happened. Like we was just watching your boy corporate like, and it's crazy because like, like I got like real life stuff that happened in the neighborhood that I mm -hmm. turned like pain into funny. You know what I'm That's saying? Like I got one episode called the N word where I knocked on a person door and he was racist for real. I swear to God, like if we was in the hood, I probably would have beat him up or something. But I, I read books, so it made me stronger than the Holy Ghost. So I had to fake it to I made it because they <laughs> yeah, didn't know Rome do as a Roman. But I knocked on this dude's door and he did not like I'm talking about we was in Quarter Lanes, Idaho. I know y'all looking like, nigga, I ain't never been to Idaho. What black people do? I didn't even know they had black people. I don't even know potatoes. I know man. Idaho from potatoes, my point. Yeah. So we work in like Idaho, you feel me? And like as soon as we get there, everybody tells like, bro, this is where they had KKK compound and they, they races and stuff, skinheads and all that. So I knock on this white dude door and he comes to the door like, get off my porch, nigger. I said, What well, that nigga owe me five dollars? And he started busting out laughing. And then I went straight and clinked this concrete, right? I clinked like an oil spot. He was like, you know what? That's some good shit. I want me a bottle of that nigger juice. I said, all right, it's only $39.95. He was like, all right, this is what I want you to do. I want you to put my nigger juice on a curb, and I want you to go knock on my neighbor door. By the time you go knock on my neighbor door, I'm going to pick my nigger juice up and leave you $40. That's how I sold him. Like, I never shook his hand like, thanks for that. That's how I sold him. But I was there for a reason out the season, so I really didn't. As long as I got my money, but I'm thinking like, we was in Detroit, you would have said that you would have really got beat up. But I, I knew that I was a professional. I had to fake it till I make it. So what I did is I said, I'm going to get y'all ass back. So I went to the next door. I seen a little girl playing in the yard. I said, can you tell your mommy there's a nigger at the door? So she run in the house like, mommy, 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 there's a nigger at the door. So her mom come out. She see me. She's like, oh, my God, why did you say that? <laughs> Smacked her daughter. She's like, I am so sorry. We just moved here from Montana. We are not like that. How can I do to make this up? I said, it's only $39.95. And she ended up buying a bottle. And I felt bad like, fuck, I just got this little girl slapped. So I, I'm writing a whole reality <laughs> show. I, got it, though. I, told, I was going through the neighborhood saying, don't shoot, I'm the KKK. They was like, what? Yeah, I'm the cool color kid. Shake your hand, meet a friend. Like, I'm, like, I was just making fun out of racist people, and they really was bad. Because I thought in my mind, like, your perception is your reality. Before I say these people racist and they support me off of a word, yeah. I'm from Detroit where, like, my cousin got killed by his best friend. So he racist. Because they both got the same skin color. We, You know how it is in Chicago. Yeah. We ought to have been murder capitalists like us. We got more black on black crime in inner city than we got in anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So if we really want to say racism, you know what I'm saying? We racist toward each other. You know what I'm saying? Right. Whether it's jealousy or envy or, you know what I'm saying, materialistic right. stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's really racist, you know what I'm saying? Just because he called me a word, but he just gave me his precious commodity. So I look at it. So I'm writing a whole TV show just based off of that. You know what I'm saying? Why I turn, like, pain into, like, Funny. Some people find it funny, some people didn't, but I'm gonna find out once we write it and shop it around to like Netflix or whatever. But I've been working on this for like since 2017. You know what I'm saying? Wow, wrong. Yeah, you got like sure. some people who you like some some people 
Yeah, yeah, I, got like, I, got, yeah I got like uh like Atheon Crockett, yeah. Brandon T. Jackson, um Okay. Um I got uh Damon Wayne's Jr. I got like a couple, but they helped me because they got writers and stuff. Because Damon Wayne Jr. He wrote a couple stuff. You know, it's family of Wayne. Yeah, so I just they just helping me. They like mentoring me. And then Brandon T. Jackson, we I'm supposed to be in this cartoon coming up. So he already I sent them my script. So and it, we got like an NDA, like a non disclosure agreement. Where we really don't supposed to talk about a lot of this yeah. stuff. But that's just a couple names to drop. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's okay. been helping okay. me out. Because like I just got into like the Hollywood, the acting, the script, the writing, the producing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But that's like my main goal that I want to get off the ground is like the P door to door show because like a lot of people familiar with that's my dope. video yeah, so I feel yeah. like that'd be a big thing for like you know what I'm saying because there's so many shows on TV they if they see a door to door show like that it's gonna be amazing you know what I'm saying because it's different like, I said wrong I, I it's seen different. hoarders whenever I seen hoarders was a TV show I know yeah. I can have a TV show man. No, like they got a TV yeah. show of just nasty shit in your house that you say I was like mm -hmm. yeah I can have it. you know well, you know what's so crazy I used to I used to do door to door. <laughs> I used to do George Doe. 2016, 2017 was crazy. I was doing it with Chad Roby. You doing it? Yeah. I was doing. <laughs> yeah. uh, we was selling. That shit was horrible. It was horrible. Like I, that's why I'm sitting there like this nigga been top salesman five years. Nigga, it took me like a whole week. I only sold like three because we was doing common shit. Like we was switching people energy bills. Oh yeah, I did that. That shit is horrible. I did yeah. that. So and then when you said the Indians and the natives, all that shit, bro, it was a whole Indian complex. Like it smelled like armpits and feet <laughs> the whole way. You knock on the door, they instantly close the door, or right. they can't. The wife can't talk to you. They husband have to come, or they close the door. They hook. It was like I was like I'm, I can't do this shit. But mm -hmm. Chad, he was in that bitch going crazy. He ten, ten a day, and said yeah. I'm blue. I'm yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I gotta rob somebody for the day over with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I, that was crazy. Yeah. But I swear to God, that I did it, bro. For real? I swear, independent energy. That's that yeah. horrible, I swear man. God, bro. I didn't that's do that. That's horrible, bro. But I did. I did. I was kind of doing good. I started. I, I kind of. I started doing. I started doing good though. Dang, that's but that's crazy. one thing, man. Door to door taught me like it's confidence, bro. I swear to God. Like I, I like I when I was growing up, bro. I was so ugly I couldn't get a fake phone number. I used to really believe I was ugly too. Then when I went door to door, I started talking to rich people, and I was getting like a thousand, two thousand, five thousand from like rich white people just with personality. It just lifted my confidence. I was getting like the baddest feet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just I was like, oh yeah, I can. If I could sell this, I was sold on myself. I wasn't a prostitute, but I was selling myself. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. I can get anybody now. You know what I'm saying? But then I started reading books too and start educating myself. So like that's what really like built my confidence, you feel me? So now I got my kids reading books that I never read. Cause I never learned none of this in school. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some people die at the age of 18 and they don't get buried till they 70. You know what I'm saying? Because they passed away mentally a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? So I learned myself, you know what I'm saying? I'm still learning. I still got a long way to go, but I know that I just try to like help the next one. Like this generation, like it's, it's way different from how it was back in the day. You know what I'm saying? With technology and advanced, you know what I'm saying? So I just be trying to guide my kids. Like, like, like one of my favorite books that really helped me like make it just in life period was Think and Grow Rich. That was like one of my favorite books. I swear to God. And Ooh, once I that read that book, so good. Yeah, like that, once I read that book, bro, it just helped me with life period because like you know how to balance yourself. It helped you with your wrong. mental, help you with like just like having fun. And that's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? Like one of my favorite lines, like it's like a funny joke. I'd be like, yeah, Midget said life is short. Because at the end of the day, I already know that like we here for a purpose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they say like Michael Jackson out here but Bobby Brown here. I'm not trying to say nothing about Bobby Brown, but I'm saying that like, look at the greats that's not here and look at us that's still here. You know what I'm saying? Right. So what are we doing for this generation? What's we passing on to them? You know what I'm saying? So that's what I look at. I just try to be a better version of me. But I was like, yeah, I got to like, just like spread the wisdom and like, just tell my story because this is a story that USA Today will love. So that's why I'm like, I just got to make sure I just put this on a show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you need these extra people, I get on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. One, I, can I tell you this one last episode? It's mind blowing. It's called Suicide. <laughs> That's up to you. It's your show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You do oh, your yeah. thing. You so, interested in yeah, us? Okay, so look, we was working um this this um town. It was um Oregon. I don't know if y'all ever went to Oregon, but it rained a lot there. So we call it the suicide state because it's like depressed because it rained like eighty percent of the year. And like, I, like you said, y'all knocked door before, so you know how it is to work when it's not raining. So when it's raining, you like demotivated. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm like, I was like the golden child. I was like the Jesus of sales because here it is, is that I had to lead by example. So I'm over here 
motivating my people in the meeting. And they like, well, we want you to go. We want to go to the door with you. We want to see how you do it. You know what I'm saying? Because you're saying this, but I want to see how your resource is in the rain. So uh, we going in the rain, and I'm, like, getting my head beat in. Like, they getting me together like a family reunion. So this one lady come out. I got, like, five, six people with me. I'm training, like, like five or six trainees, taking them to the door. So this lady come out. She just start cussing us out, like, whatever you're selling, I don't want. I'm about to call the police, get the F out of my neighborhood, boom, boom. So I start thinking back when I was 12 years old with the paper route with yeah. the, my, my coworker. Yeah. When, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, when it all stopped. The white, dude, I'm thinking, like, oh, they racist. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. So I said, all right, well, Jesus didn't sell everybody. We're going to see you around like a donut. So she closed the door, but she opened back up the door. It's like, what do you say? And I was like, I, we, I just walked him out and make you smile. We're going to catch you when you're positive. She was like, no, what you say about Jesus? I was like, well, I just said Jesus didn't sell everybody. She was like, you a Christian? I was like, uh, I just believe in God. She was like, she like she paused, and then she started, like, she had a tear come down her eye. She had a smile on her face. And then she was like, like right out of nowhere, she was like, you know what? I'm so sorry for snapping on y'all. Today just wasn't my day. I just got some bad news before you knocked on my door that I just lost my son in a car accident. She was like, she was mm -hmm. like, so uh, please bear with me. I'm like, that's all right. Moment of silence for you and your son. So I just like, we just did like a, and then we just did like a moment of silence. Then right after that, she was like, so but what are you out here doing? And uh, she was like, she was like, I got to ask you. She was like, because I just came off so rude to you. And I'm be honest with you. You just got this warm spirit about you because I don't see how people can be real rude to you when you got this personality and you working in the rain. Usually people that's working in the rain, they'll be mad that they're working in the rain. And I looked at myself and I was like, dude, I'm saying, see how it's, it's important to be nice, but it's more important. It's, I said it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And they didn't get what I was saying, but I was letting them know, like, you can learn. Even a dummy know to buckle up. Just imagine if I would have been rude to this lady. She wouldn't even apologize for being rude Not to us. You know what I'm saying? So then she's like, I tell you what, I'm going to buy your product. She's like, do a clean carpet. I was like, am I black? She was like, yeah. She was like, all right. She's like, I got this spot on my carpet. She's like, if it clean this spot off my carpet, I'm going to buy. So I walked in her house. So as soon as I walked in her house, she had like a gun on her table. I was like, well, look, don't shoot. I'm probably at the wrong house. She's like, no, no, no. Let me tell you. She's like, right before you knocked on my door, I had got a call that my son just got into a car accident and passed away. And I was just about to kill myself. But you just. She was like, you just changed my whole, um, um, she was like, you just wow. changed my whole mind on thinking. She was like, no, trust me, if it, if it clean the spot, I'm going to buy. I ended up cleaning the spot, and she bought. So not only did I save this lady life, I talked to her like two years later. She even started a real estate business, doing good and everything. So just imagine if I would have mm -hmm. been like real yeah. arrogant to this, you know what I'm saying? So I named that episode called Suicide. But it, it's like more to details with it, but I was just trying to cut it short. You know yeah, that's saying? dope. But that's that's crazy, yeah, though. Like, you rock. never know like who behind that door. So that's why I was like, yeah. see, that episode, people dope. watch that to see what the for other, sure. what's in it for, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just like, and that ain't really funny. That's just real life stuff. Mm -hmm. You never know what people going through. My for grandma sure. told me a long time ago, she said, if you put your problems on the table and somebody else put their problems on the table, if you look at their problems, you will pick your problems up. Mm -hmm. You pick your problems on the table like, man, you know what? Man, this is my problem, man. I just got fired on my day off. And then you put your problems on the table like, man, look, my uncle, he's got three weeks to live. He'd be like, man, I'll damn, pick man, I'll pick, man, I'll pick your I'll problems pick up. Yours up. Your uncle got three weeks to live, man, that ain't nothing, you know? So that's why you never know what people are going through. Yeah. Yeah, that's the sure. raw man. I can't. I hope. Man. Hey man, Netflix. I'm stop too, playing man. with him. Hey, what up? This ain't no man. <laughs> look, Netflix, Tubi, uh, HBO Max, yeah. minimum yeah. either. Stars. 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 Y'all, y'all tweaking this yeah. nigga right here. I know they're doing BMS for Detroit. Hey, bro, yeah. I've been, bro. You tap no. in. That's why I do the parodies on that shit because it's so <laughs> raw. Like BMF is raw as hell. Yeah. Like yeah. that shit is. So it's it's early in the year. Boy, what you got short term goals for the year? What you plan on? What you got going on for twenty twenty two? Oh man, twenty twenty two. I'm just trying to like just keep working, be relevant. You know, take care of my family. My um my short term, the number one short term goal though is to um like basically be on the big screen. I know it's gonna happen, but I'm talking about like where like people will really see me for like my hard work, I pity in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And like my long term goal is like, you know, I just wanna have generational wealth, like have a legacy for my that. family and kids, you know what I'm saying? Like like yeah, at right the end right. of the day, that's what is cool. all this work for? I just told my son this earlier, like, I'm working extra hard to make sure y'all good, you won't have a life like I had, you know what I'm saying? I grew up having to hit licks and steal out of stores and get a paper out job just so I could give me some jewelry. You getting 
Dior's and Balenciaga's and you know what I'm saying? I couldn't get this and I got 10 kids I got to do this with. So yeah. it's like, it ain't how much money you make, it's how much you save. So I learned now that I just want to have generational wealth that way. Sure. So whether it's Bitcoin, NFTs, all the way to real estate, you know what I'm saying? Like investing, you know what I'm saying? That's one thing we, we got to do as like black people, you know what I'm saying? We like uh, all of them doing it, you know what I'm saying? They know exactly what to do. It's just that we be lost sometimes. They say the smartest people don't come from Harvard and Yale. We come from inner city, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The smartest people come from, you know, poverty and, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, struggle. How to, how to make, a, suffer, make a dollar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just be trying to, like, teach, teach it to the new generation. So that the, my, 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 like, my, my um, long, long term goal is I want to start, like, a, a, a hard knock university. Well, I teach like young people how to be entrepreneurs because I started like 11 years old, how to 12 years old, how to be a business person. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They don't teach that in school. They don't teach our community that. So I want to start like a like you know like a YMCA, like a youth center, mm -hmm. like and then just like have meetings every day where I teach people how to make money. Rather, you could go yeah. knock on doors or you could go on this corner and sell lemonade or you know what I'm saying whatever yeah, you sure. do, just like just business orientated. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how I learned how to like survive. You know what I mean? So if you could do door to door, you could do anything in your life. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I went viral on an accident. I didn't chose this. Like I never in career, like growing up in high school, you know how they had career days and yeah. mm -hmm. like important people come out and talk to us in the hood. They'd be like, "What do you want to be, bro? I want to be an NBA player. I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a police officer. I never said I want to be a door to door salesman." That wasn't my, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this was right. like, it was just handed to me, you know what I'm saying? It was a blessing. I found my niche and then the Lord just blessed me. And now, like, a lot of millions of people see me, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere I go, they be like, oh, I know, you know what I'm saying? So it's a blessing. So I just want to take advantage of it. But at the same time, I'm humble because I know that I got a long way to go, but I'm just going to keep working every day and eventually it's going to pay off. Man, that's good. Well, you know, that's good, man. You know, show. Congratulations on your marriage. Big congratulations congrats. on that. Big congrats. Hope you have a healthy baby on the way. Wife pregnant. Yeah, you know, in 2022, sure. we're gonna wrap this up, man. Yeah. You an interesting life. I wish we could have stayed and did a movie. For sure. But, For sure. So we gonna let you get up out right. of. You going back home? You driving back home today? Yeah. God damn! Damn. Damn. damn! He's trapping, man. He's trapping. Man. Man. He's trapping. Man. 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 With the hug, you got that yeah. hustle, man. Niggas don't have, bro. You know, I drove to Detroit to do Detroit Urban, Urban, Urban Drive training, and I drove there, and we drove back right out. So it's like yeah. the same way. That's why I, that's it, yeah. raw. Like, bro, me and drove there, and drove back. You, bro, we didn't drove all the way to like this is our third time, but we drove to Chicago. No, we this is Chicago, but we drove to Houston, a fam. We drove to drove LA. to Houston. Why y'all driving? Yeah. Bro? We, 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 to we got ten kids, like ten plane tickets to be like, you know what I'm saying? It's right. a fortune. All we do is fill up the gas a couple times and save about a thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like I said. I, I don't really mind. It's a road trip for me and my kids. Like mm -hmm. my kid, like I drove them all the way to LA. They didn't met Aiden Ross, Quavo. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that. You know, they get to tap in too, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We could have flew there, but I was like, let's it's a road trip, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I got all these kids, we get a little rental, boom, you know what I'm saying? That's so wrong. it's like fun, it's like a road trip, family road yeah, trip. That's true, yeah, that's yeah, wrong. So. That's wrong. But yeah, hopefully you get home safe, you know, that blizzard out there. Yeah. Appreciate sure. you coming through. Yeah, I'm Sarah's waiting to get my waiting on them to knock on my door like yeah, yeah Kenny Brooks said you wanna be in a movie. Yeah. I say, last we in that movie. Yeah. 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 Sure. So we have to go wrap that up right there. That was cool. That was cool. Boy, man, look, hey, look, I ain't yeah, interesting world. Boy, yeah, we usually yeah. ask questions. Boy, that shit was as interesting. Boy, we was listening. <laughs> Special guest in the building, you know, Search King. Mr. Oh God. Oh God. Mr. Bless God, be like. Mr. Part 100,000, part 100,075. Oh, <laughs> hey. Corporate in this bitch, man. How you feeling, Search. man? You got an older baby now at the time? Well, I have three children. Brazil is my oldest one. So at that time, mm -hmm. she was my oldest. So it's somebody older than her now. That's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> As y'all can see, we got Brazil Maria. Say, hey, Brazil. <laughs> Motherfuckers say whatever the fuck they want to say about corporate units can never say I don't take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. Not a soul. Top five, top five Chicago rappers that you... Your top five. Corporate, that nigga, he Which really corporate? be Dark skin corporate? No, it's the, he spell it with a K. Oh, yeah. Dark no, skin. I know the song. He, he corporate, he rap like this. Honestly, <laughs> even <laughs> niggas want to be on to me. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That's the Dark skin dude with the dread. Yeah, he's smooth. Okay. 
Contact this nigga. Yeah. He's right. smooth. I fuck with him. Yeah. How, the, how the music look like? like the checks with the music. They. Slow down, like, oh, yeah, drop yeah. that. I always felt the way towards Skinbone because he don't, he's not a real artist for real. I don't give a fuck how many <laughs> songs the nigga pull out. Like I don't give a fuck. He's not a real rapper. You went to Spencer, oh, God. bro. You went to Spencer, bro. Okay. I was with, bro. Um, <laughs> class of two thousand two. For real? That's expensive. Oh, yeah, we used to be whooping y'all. Shorty, I went to Nash. We used to come across a lick, get up with y'all. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs>